that are being used for these particular objects and the surface properties as well. And of course, if I bring in a system into Trace Pro, and I've called this the demo system for you guys, there's that hybrid lens that we know so much and love. Uh, we can see that the source for this particular system can be almost anything we want. I have a die surface over here. Right now we're specifying that this is a Lambertian flux emitter, but it's very simple to go to the surface property and pull from our catalogs a Luxion Rebel Cool White LED. And here we go. I've just done that. You can then specify calculated wavelengths so we can see true color. And I'll specify the, a few of the visible wavelengths here. We only need about three or four to completely cover the spectrum. And the program has already been put into the program. So we're using a real source here that's been taken from the uh, Luxion setups. And uh, so that's capable of doing that. So there's our, our information on the, the source. And then we can go back to our interactive optimizer. We can hit the Start button. And the program will now go off and optimize that particular system um, and create an error function. There's our variables that are being shown for those particular points as we go through the optimization. And we can stop it at any time to see what's going on. We can also, this uh, part of the dialog over here in the bottom right shows the Candela plot if we've called that up uh, from Trace Pro and actually want to show that as well. So we can see the program going through, doing the optimization, ray tracing the system, getting results, and then feeding them back to the, the optimizer and according to the spreadsheet then creating that target. I'm going to stop the, uh, the optimization here. And what I'd like to do at this point in time is to close down a couple of these windows and bring you into an even more sophisticated system, which is the demo with a reflector. And so this is the type of capability you can do. You can start adding more objects. If you go to the Object tab over here, I could right-click and say New Object. And what I've done during that portion of this is to bring in the capability to specify this as a reflector, this piece in here. And so now I have the hybrid lens, and I have the reflector here. And the reason why I'm doing this is that I'm going to try to make sure that no one can see the LED itself. So in other words, there's no high intensity coming out of there. You can't see the LED die. And the way that I do that is by completely sending all the light outward at, at 70 degrees and then using the reflector here to send the light out collimated towards a target. In this case, I can go from a 90 degree output LED with like a 70 degree half angle to something that's almost collimated. And so these type of LEDs and these type of systems are perfect for the design and use of the interactive optimizer along with TracePro. So I've pretty much gone through the whole system, what you can do with the TracePro product, what you can do with the optimizer. And I'm going to go now into a question and answer session. Uh, in fact, uh, what I'd like to do is find out what kind of questions you have. Um, so if you would, please type in your questions. And I'll be glad to go over them and show you uh, what TracePro can do, or, or hopefully to answer uh, any type of things that I haven't covered. Well, I'm not getting any questions at this point in time. Um, please, I do have someone who's raised his hand. OK. There is one other thing I would like to show you at this point in time. And that was I did not show how to start using the optimizer. And it's very, very simple. You just turn on the object and right click and say new object. And as you can see over here, you can start creating any type of output that you want to. You add a segment point. You can move that wherever you want it as well. So if this was your reflector, it's very quick to, to start that off. I can then add a segment point. I can say that this is a, uh, a line. Or I 
adding a spline type point to this allows me to do this things of this nature. And then I can go to the raise tool and I can then go through and watch what happens for this portion, which is not reflective. I can go back over to this point by the segment tool and then specify this is, is a reflector type setup and that's how I do that. And then if I were to spend a, an interactive ray in this direction, you see what happens there. I have a question. What are the different goal options for the optimizer? Uh, in the optimizer, I believe what you're asking, David, is if what type of targets or merit functions that you can request. Um, currently, we have a flux target, and the flux target says how much power can you maximize or minimize on a particular surface. You can specify a irradiance uh, in terms of average. You can then specify a, t a target and a location in TracePro where we'd like to see this irradiant average is. You can also spec specify an irradiance profile where you create a target, what the irradiance target will look like at a particular surface or location. You can also do a candela profile, and we've seen those. And that means that we're in here and we're able to specify what the angular target's going to be and apply that sort of thing. You can have multiple targets. So you can have a candela target. You could also have, for instance, the CIE, a color spectrum target, where you're specifying that as well on that same target. And you can then specify weights, so you can say that one is much more important than the other. Um, so that's, I believe, uh, answers David's question about the different targets that we can have. Um, I guess Tin Chan Cheng asks, uh, can we do asymmetry? Yes, there is a way to do asymmetry in the program. Uh, we're going to be adding that in the future. Um, at this point in time, we do have the capability to create a biaxial uh, type system. And um, and um, right now, I do not have that particular system loaded. Uh, but you're, you will be able to specify that you have two objects, two sketches in both directions, and then to combine them into a second asymmetric system. And I have another question. Uh, would the optimizer work for multiple objects and multiple sources? Yes, it will. And uh, what's happening here is that currently we're showing an interactive ray trace, but when we call out Trace Pro, we can have as many sources as we want. We just have to specify them in the Trace Pro portion of it. The utility only specifies the geometry that will be changing or varying to be optimized in the system. And yes, you can have multiple objects because you just click on the object, say new object, and now you can specify a second object on top of here. This could be, for instance, a, uh, I go back to the segment tool, at a segment point, this could be then a, a spline, so it could be a lens. So we could create a lens right after this particular reflector, for instance. Okay. Uh, I have a question from someone who asks if, uh, how we compare with other programs. The way that we compare with other programs is that the, this program is interactive. You can sketch so quickly. You can get an answer so quickly. You can do everything in the spreadsheets and then export them to create 3D CAD geometry. I don't know of a way to create this type of geometry in a lot of different products. I, I don't know who has a, a sketcher that allows you to, to immediately see what your, your output change is here as you click on the different portions. And then the targets to digitize in. I think this system is 10 times faster because you can create a starting point that's so much better than some of those other products. I mean, we sell the Oslo program, and it would be impossible to create some of this geometry like this to start off. And, and I'm also involved with an, inter, uh, an international lens design conference. And to be able to sketch out a couple of ideas that I have and quickly get uh, answers in this manner is, is going to be wonderful for me. I, I think that it's a very, very powerful tool. And these tools allow us to see what happens when we change some of these things and some of these shapes so that we don't go off and immediately create a lot of opt optical systems that don't work because we can't see this type of interaction with our, our objects and we can't make them on the fly like this. So I think that this type of capability pays for itself very quickly 
and it gives us 